Well, while we were preparing for the shoot, I saw a big black soldier fly female on top of my bin blanket trying to oviposit or lay eggs in the little layers of the bin blanket. I shoot her away, but she has been there before because when I was looking in the bin, digging through, checking for food and worms and all that, I found some BSFL, that stands for Black Soldier Fly Larvae. They are the maggots of a very handsome, non-biting fly, and they are frequent visitors to your worm bin, especially in the beginning when you have excess food. These guys, I'm not kidding, are the rock stars of decomposition. They eat five times their weight in food. So let me tell you how it's gonna happen in your bin, because I guarantee you're gonna run into them. They show up absolutely all the time everywhere, and they are no reason to be concerned. And I, of, I often find if uh, we learn more about the things that scare us, they're not so scary anymore. These guys used to just freak me out because they show up in such huge numbers so suddenly. And now I absolutely love to see them because they are so cool. So the female comes, she lays her eggs. She lays 500 to 900 eggs at a time. They're almost microscopic. You can barely see them. They look like a little smudge of food waste or something. And the, the larvae hatch, they're about the size of a grain of flour when they first hatch. And within a week, they will be an inch long. That's amazing growth. Again, they eat five times their weight in food waste. So they're gonna get in there and take care of some of that surplus you have. And all of a sudden you're gonna see this great big wad of giant maggots in your bin. Now, because these are commercially sold, they don't like to use the word maggot because everybody finds that real negative. So the kind of commercial name for them is grub. They are soldier grubs, black soldier fly larvae, maggots or soldier grubs and um, their, their eating is absolutely pr prodigious. They just can eat through tons of stuff. We had them at Pearl City High. We were cultivating them, uh, experimenting a little bit with, with this organism in its own special bin. And uh, I would put in 100 pounds of baked beans and they'd be gone in two days. I would put in nine of those giant pans of pepperoni pizza, four days, all gone. These guys are absolutely amazing eaters. So they grind away, but their product is not their poop like it is with the worms. Their product is themselves because they're going to go through five stages of in instars, their juvenile stage, molting five times because they outgrow their skin really quick within about two to three weeks. And by the time they get to their sixth instar, they are at their peak nutritional value. These guys, by the time they're on their sixth instar, they've molted now for the sixth time, are 42% protein, 34% fat, and they're also very high in calcium and phosphorus and other nutrients. So they are highly prized as animal feed, and they're used for chicken feed, hog feed, fish feed, and they're, they're being um, studied to see if they can replace some of the more expensive feeds or feeds that are doing things like depleting fish populations uh, for, for cat food and dog food. There's a lot of money being uh, spent by both corporations and the academic community to study these guys for their capabilities as food because they're so incredibly rich at, their, at the point where they're starting to pupate. So when they hit that sixth instar and they do their last molting, they actually shed their feeding mouth parts and their new mouth parts are for climbing. So when they hit that point, they're going to climb out of the goop they're in, find a place to go pupate. The pupation period is about 10 days. Their outer skin hardens, becomes a puparium, and inside all of their cells turn to goo and start to reorganize themselves into some structures that you would recognize. Head, abdomen, thorax, six legs, two, two wings, another set of wings called the halters. And in the very end, when that shell breaks open, a very, very handsome insect, black soldier fly adult, will emerge, dry its wings, move its little antenna around, see what's going on, 
and go from there now. He has no mouth parts. They're gone. These flies are not feeding flies, so you've never run across them in your whole life because they're not in your kitchen, they're not at your picnic. They're not feeding at all. When they emerge from their pupa, they will go straight up and find some foliage, hang around in there, waiting for a mate. They live for five to eight days as adults, that's it. So they've got about a week to find a mate, mate, find some garbage, lay eggs, and die. It's a very, very quick adult stage because they can't eat, they have no mouth parts. So they're not a pest at all because they're not moving you know, they're not eating poop and then going to your food. They're not a pest at all. And again, you've been around them, but you never really noticed them. They're a pretty large fly. They're slow moving, so they're easy to snatch out of the air. We used to be amused at Pearl City when we had a lot of these going. There'd be, there'd be a lot of um, adults up in the air and the bobos would just come flying in and snatch them out of the air. It was really fun to watch because they're, they're pretty slow flyers. and. Um, they make good food for, for the bird population as well. So right now at Texas A&M University, they have an entire department devoted to finding out the economic uses of this particular creature. At Pearl City High, we did something else though. I mentioned that they were 34% fat, lipids, oil. Over at Oceanic Institute, over uh, on the windward side here, they have an oil press. So what we did at Pearl City High, we cultivated these guys, we collected 200 pounds of them and froze them in a freezer. And we took them to Oceanic Institute, used their oil press, and out from one end comes this protein meal, and out the other end, they squeezed out the fat, the lipids. I had a couple of uh, girls who were AP chemistry students, and using some fairly simple high school chemistry techniques, they refined that oil into biofuel for a science fair project. And they got some little vehicle and they drove it around campus using biofuel created from black soldier fly larvae. So imagine that. Imagine not only animal feed, but a very, very high quality biofuel made from garbage. And I'm talking garbage, folks. You see them in your worm bin, all eating all these pretty bananas and papaya skins and apples. But these guys are the ones that will take care of roadkill. So if you ever turn over a roadkill and it's loaded with maggots, that's these guys. They can produce an amazing amount of high quality biomass from the ickiest, yuckiest garbage, manure, dead carcasses and stuff in your worm bin you've ever seen. So you don't have to love them, but you can appreciate how cool they are. And if you want to pull them out of your worm bin, feed them to your chickens, the lizards in your garden, uh, the birds that are floating around, everybody loves these juicy morsels. And I actually have an article about a pizzeria in Oregon that makes a black soldier fly larvae pizza. And you know what? Everybody reports that it's just delicious. Saute anyone?